Yeah. Brian? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. You ready to go? You ready? Yeah. Let's oh, do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the Vinyl Word Podcast. As always, I'm Steve Beach. And I'm Brian Mayer. Hello. want to thank you all for, for continuing to listen. And as always, well, not always, but here lately, we are here in our beautiful Greenwood Public Library. Yes, and we will be here until they kick us out, which will probably be within the next three yeah, episodes. Which almost happened last time. <laughs> That's Cause, true. Because there was a lady that walked by the window checking to make sure Brian wasn't having a heart attack or something. Yes, I got librarian side eye. That actually <laughs> yes, happened. He yes, he did. But anyway, so we appreciate them letting us use the studio. Uh, if you want to follow us, we're on Facebook. And however you're listening to us right now, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever, just be sure you follow us there and turn on notifications. Because if we said before, Brian and I don't do this for a living. So we put out episodes as we can. We would starve and die. Yes, we this would. This is for the best for everyone. <laughs> right, right. But we enjoy doing this. You can also contact us at vinylwar 22 at gmail.com, as always. And, mm-hmm. of course, we have a YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. And uh, we're also on SoundCloud, if you're not real familiar with that. It's where a lot of independent artists post their thing to get recognition. And Yeah, I like SoundCloud. Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Steve, do you ever just feel low and you want to get an encouraging text? Always. Okay. Well, I do too. And today's episode, we actually have sponsored a sponsor this time, and it's Textual Healing. <laughs> okay. You sign up for Textual Healing, and they will send you <laughs> an encouraging text. Oh. Now, there's tiers to that. There's a free one where it's just passive aggressive. Sure. Then okay. there's the middle tier, which is, it's fine. You'll be like, oh, okay, thanks for that. And then if you pay for the higher tier... Like, you'll walk away feeling great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, like, money for feelings. Right. I felt like that was a nice transition yeah. into, like, the rest of our episode. Yeah. So. so if you start your day feeling bad, you can later, later on in your day feeling... <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, before we continue with Glenn Turner, let's check in with our friend uh, Charlie Cutler. Charlie Cutler. It seems to me that, oh, hello, this is Charlie Cutler. We know. Let's just yeah. talk for a couple of minutes. It seems to me that the more you know about one thing, the more you get to know about another. Hmm. Take my cousin Carberry, for that instance. That doesn't work. His backyard what? was full His of animals. Carburetor? Yeah. Rabbits and squirrels and raccoons and woodchucks and so yeah, on. Uncle Distributor Some tame cap. and some right. pretty wild. Of course, they had a joke going around town that every time it began to rain, folks expected Cousin Carberry to order some lumber. <laughs> He'd put a raccoon on his head and just run around like it was a <laughs> hat. Because with all his animals, he certainly looked like a modern-day Noah. At first, the Noah Khan, townspeople the thought that backyard artist? zoo yeah, was exactly. amusing. Okay. But after a while, they began to get curious. And they asked Cousin Carberry why he collected all those animals. And he said, <laughs> he wouldn't tell none your business. <laughs> the more he refused, the more they wanted to know. Then until he shut finally, the door and had a candlelit dinner with 14 raccoons. Carberry's house and walked right around to the backyard and said, Now look here, Mr. Carberry, it's time we had some answers. Then he unholstered the his weapon. wants to know why you're keeping all these animals. Oh, they're not against it, mind you. They just want to know why. Because <laughs> I'm starting to butcher Well, shot. Cousin Carberry <laughs> stood there scratching his chin, and finally he said, Constable, I'm a curious fella. And I figure the more I get to know about animals, the more I can learn about people. And then Wait, they called the psychiatrist. Maybe he had something what? there. What? And that's something worth considering, isn't it? Is no, it, though? No, it isn't. It isn't. So, okay, so I just want to make sure I'm following the logic here, Steve. He's curious about people. And, yes. And there are people in the town. Yes, and in order to learn about the people in the town, he spends time with wild animals in his backyard. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Not. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely do not get where <laughs> Charlie Cutler is coming from on this one. <laughs> Me either. That's, that's bad advice poorly executed yeah. right there. <laughs> that's right. Moving on. Yep. Ooh. So we're on side two of Glenn Turner. Glenn W. Turner. Oh, the yes. The W is important. That's right. Steve. I never knew there was a 
Glenn Turner that wasn't the guy in this record until you pointed it out, out to me. So yeah. now I'll make sure I add the W, Glenn W. <laughs> Turner. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, we learned last time, you know, that he supposedly was encouraging people, but also ripped them off of other money. Yes, and I, I really... I don't think he intended it to be this way. No. I just think it's the way that it, it fell in the recording. But sure. I love how side one ends with him addressing the fact that he's a con man and he explicitly agrees to it. <laughs> right. Yep. So let's see how side two goes. Oh, it, yeah. Let's go. Let's drop the needle and get going, buddy. I am most certainly the biggest con man you've ever laid eyes on. There he is. Because yeah, I'm conning I know, I know. people into believing in themselves. Um, Mr. Glenn W. Turner, Charles uh, Ponzi is on the phone, and he would like a word. <laughs> in oneself. If <laughs> we could do a three-way call. Short for confidence, <laughs> if you look it up in the Webster Dictionary. There's free words in the Webster Dictionary and all other dictionaries. It ought not to be there. <laughs> and those it's words are... And... And especially the word... Itches. Oh, that last one I had to ask someone about. Hey. Yeah. Can't never done anything. And impossible. And? The thing about doing the impossible it's is a you have no essential conjunction. <laughs> yes. When you throw dirt, you're bound to lose ground. When you throw Confidence dirt, you lose ground. There's a bullfighter who goes in the bull ring with muscle on his more uh, proverbial things he can throw in here. Yeah. yeah. Right. And these are southern folksy wisdom that I have never heard. A confident okay. bullfighter has and mustard you, on his sword. No matter where you are. Tonight, today, no matter where you are listening to this record, I believe in people. <laughs> I believe in people and giving me money, God, more specifically. One day, he'll grant me the power to reach out and lay my hand on your head. And, <laughs> and heal you, you of belief. Satan. Be gone! You don't have instant belief. <laughs> Can you feel hooked, the fire? <laughs> you've been lied to you so many times. Now write me a check. <laughs> and when the right thing comes along, you don't believe it. He is kind of a TV preacher vibe. He is. You're looking for four-leaf clovers. And when you find it, you think somebody planted it there to fool you. What's the angle? I don't. You look for the The angle of four-leaf clovers? Right. 90 degrees. I wish I could slice open your head, no matter where you are. There's always those leprechauns trying to trick me. (laughs) And I can take out your tape that's been programmed into believing you're only worth so much. Or you only can have so much confidence. And if I could take over your mind for 30 days and you do exactly like I told you, you could earn <laughs> You'd be your bankrupt. Five, 10, yes. 15, 20, or even you, know, you can't imagine how much you can earn. People using a dare to be great philosophy. Imagine a number that you can't imagine. <laughs> now write the check for that amount. From Alabama. <laughs> Another one, 36000 You know why he did it? You know why they did it? <laughs> Another one for $9, but we don't talk about him. Earned sixteen thousand dollars in thirty days. Well, she never earned that kind of money. In These are all before. deposits he's listing in his bank account. <laughs> because she was dumb enough to believe what I told her. There's only two. Yeah, a bit of honesty. Of sound of yes. voice. Dumb enough to believe. They Thank can you. Make an immediate decision at this very moment. That might have been the, the uh, like working title of some you, earlier you books, like The Audacity of Hope. Doctor, dumb enough to believe. Right. You have to think it over, and you know what's going to happen. You're going to ask average men and <laughs> oh, women. Oh, this guy's a con artist. Never mind. You think I can amount to something? Now, your neighbor is smarter than you. If you don't believe it, ask him. <laughs> what do you think he's going to say? He's going to start clicking his computer. And he's been told all his, his life. He's going to five, ten, fifteen, and twenty. He's going to connect to America years, Online. He's going to immediately say it can't <laughs> be done. No, dang, he's dang, to dang. This kind of money he'd be doing it. What are you asking him for? Fourteen four. Your boss keeps telling you what a That's good That's a number that all the old family. people will remember. <laughs> you got such a good deal. The real advantage at twenty eight eight. You ever thought about it? Nope. Success is not in the amount of money you'll earn. I try to be <laughs> successful. In the amount of money that I earn. <laughs> I try to be it's successful in my job, right? Yeah. This guy really puts the it's suck in like success. Giving is better than receiving. If I've only reached one person. Here tonight. <laughs> that I've failed. If I only reach <laughs> that I want to keep going. Throughout the United States, <laughs> My pyramid Mexico, will Canada, crumble. Australia, Puerto Rico, England, Belgium, France, and all the countries we're going into this year. Mercury, Mars, Saturn. <laughs> I did more than the average guy. You're not looking at Glenn Turner. Or you're not listening to Glenn Turner. <laughs> you're, listening you're listening to Elvis with a hair lip. <laughs> the past. Uh huh. The present. And the future. You're looking and listen 
to a man that once sat in the same seat as you listened to a similar speech, saying, if I only could please that about myself. If I can make a speech if like that, I though, only if could I could be calm, I could be great too. <laughs> My knees literally knocked together in talking to 12 people one time in Marion, South Carolina. For five weeks, I oh, he could no talk to 12 people at once, Brian. He's because talented. My friends Ooh. and my neighbors were laughing. Not laughing because they wanted to hurt me, but because they didn't even <laughs> Laughing because they were watching a comedy routine. George Carlin was in town. <laughs> because he couldn't stand the laugh. I have an advantage over you people. Because <laughs> I told It's you. called your accounts. <laughs> you see, I was fortunate enough to have the gift of a hairlip. And everybody looked at Glenn Turner saying, if a jerk like that can make it, anybody can make it. Well, mainly just the jerk part. Right. Because then they want to trade with me. They want to buy my courses. And they're right. Because if they can believe in themselves as much as I learned to believe in themselves, and it takes time, you don't do it overnight. Because it takes <laughs> you, you have to keep subscribing to my course. Two years in college. There are monthly dues. What to major in. How am I going to convince you in 30 minutes or 40 minutes? <laughs> Which one is it, done. 30 or 40? I'm mm -hmm. no miracle worker. I can't lay hands on your head like Oral Roberts or Billy Graham. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to. Oh, he and sure I'd would. Every dime I'll ever earn and every because dime if I touched I've you, I'd be sued for, for sexual harassment. Do so. <laughs> In this modern day and age, well, it depends we where I lay my hands, I suppose. But. And instant disbelief. That's the reason we never become anything. It's because <laughs> we'll never believe in ourselves. We'll always listen to the mass majority. The mass majority are fake. We listen to the mass media. Financially, morally, <laughs> and spiritually. It's called big media nowadays. If everybody's yeah. making fun of you or criticizing, you know you're on the right track. Because <laughs> most of the people ain't got it. <laughs> if, if a cop pulls you over and takes you to jail, and you're doing like the right thing. You, right. Just, just if you find yourself in federal court before a judge, congratulations. Like if they associate you with embezzlement, <laughs> you're doing the now, right battles, thing. Don't always go to the strongest or fastest man or woman. But sooner or later, the like man the six or woman million dollar man is the man or woman <laughs> who first thinks they can. Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, inspired me He's more than Napoleon? any other book outside of the Bible like that I've ever read in my life. No, Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, okay. When my friends and my neighbors would laugh own. at me, I'd Ripper. go back and I'd oh, read that book half yeah. the night. Make your own money. And it says, did your friends laugh at you today? I did said, it? yes, they did. It was called and Hot for Tots. Right track, yes. so. yes. And when my friends quit laughing at me because I was doing good, I had to move to another town so they'd laugh. I like to do things that people are making fun of and laughing at. I like to start new companies. That's why I, I like keep a rubber chicken in my pants. Because nobody's in my way. It's always amazed me at how I got to graduate from college and get all that brains and go down to an informant office with some tenth grader running it and pay him to hunt him a job. Is that a thing in the 70s? We certainly don't learn People much would go it. like to college and then pay unqualified people to seek employment on their how behalf? We can get I school. guess. That explains a lot of you employment in the 70s. It. You're guilty. Yeah. You're guilty I've seen 70s cars. I guess that would make more sense. beating it into the ground. I had a young man the other day, I said, how long have you been working for that company? He said, ever since they threatened to fire me. <laughs> I asked another young man, Wait, what? I said, uh, why do you go to work every morning? He says, everybody else does. Isn't that a miserable excuse? Aren't <laughs> what you about, tired of I like traffic? food. Right, I like, like my house. Decision? Yeah. I know. I like not living on the street. You're sitting around waiting yeah. on something to turn up. How about I have a how family? How about beginning yes. with the sleeves? Quit and clapping. Just stop computer. encouraging him. Yeah. Was told at the age of six that you were great. Honey, you could do anything. Mother believes in you. Mother knows there's no such word as impossible. I believe she, he said six. You're great, honey. Yes. You're my little darling. Oh, the mother is senile. <laughs> yes. Daddy would say you're dead as a little boy. You can go He's anywhere girl, you honey. want. <laughs> you get right in there, sweetie. As long what as it's worth a nurse. You jerk, you do it, wouldn't you? Why'd you do it? Because the big computer told the little computer it could be done. At the age of 25, Why does he the keep going back to computers, computer Steve? You can't do I don't know. Jerk. Maybe that's when social media it's was born. amazing how dumb you get from 6 to 25 years old. Just like he doesn't old. have an IT background. You ever no. wonder why, what happened? 
In the age of six, everything that big computer is telling you it can be done, it's done. See what I mean? It understands, so therefore it tells you it can be done. There's big pooters, little now, pooters. Says, can I do it? It <laughs> Just says, yes, pooters yes, everywhere yes. you look. <laughs> Talking to each other. <gasps> he's been trained for he, one he job. He predicted the internet, Brian. <laughs> Back in the 70s. Or yeah. love people, or he's halfway one way or the other. Maybe it DARPA was on one of his... Uh, Scams and too. <laughs> Maybe. He's been programmed differently, and when you say I'm going to do something, unless he's been through and programmed to believe, unless he's done it, his computer starts saying no can compute, no can compute. <laughs> and sometimes and the DLL says, file will crash, causing a runtime error, you and then you'll have to black. reconfigure your IP address, and that just You're sucks. <laughs> I have a blind instructor. Last time it did that, I had to turn it off and this on again. One day will become a millionaire. Why? And then I kick it. So then I start calling it rebooting. He flees in his own. <laughs> That's where it's from. It's like fixing an old stereo. Right. This Saturday night. I booted it once. A reboot it. Kick it again. Reboot. In Lakeland, Florida. Last night I returned from the JC convention, and I witnessed. <laughs> it was in the a pennies. <laughs> of the ten most outstanding. Young men of America, men under 35 years <laughs> they old. They gave me eight men of them. like Elvis Presley in the entertainment business. The president's press oh, secretary. Oh, Elvis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota. Uh, missionary. He was a loot in it? 30 years old. This was in it's the cold. 70s. Was Elvis that young Southern then? Southern slums. Wasn't that like the I was larger in, yes. the 30 year season? Old first yeah. black man on the city council of Boston, Massachusetts. A 30-year-old black man He didn't sit around and criticize and said it can be done. He didn't protest, didn't march, but went out and did it and earned the respect of both black and white alike. I talked to him. I challenged him to put there to be great. <laughs> to an arm wrestling he contest. my challenge. <laughs> Quit clapping. Quit encouraging him. <laughs> he beat me in four seconds. I cried. One of them stated... When I was a boy, I read the comic books. And I was always <laughs> I'm just kidding, I looked at the pictures. <laughs> and when I saw a movie, I didn't really I was read the comics. In the movie. And when I heard a song, I was always a singer. <laughs> okay. That young man became Elvis Presley. Suspicious mind, baby. And ever dreamed I've ever dreamed, and ever thought I've had, ever had has come through. 10,000 times or more because God has been with me. That was the total sum of a speech. Or I ripped people off. Yeah. <laughs> a young man that made it. One of the two. It's, it's a close call. God or ripping off. I don't know. Anything. <laughs> I mean, my, my bank account looks the same. Ben so. Turner has been <laughs> criticized, facing it the same way. I've been laughed at. I've been made fun of. It's wonderful. <laughs> Federally indicted. Because when people are making fun of you, that means you're running with the ball. And nobody ever tracks on the guy that's not running with the ball. No, I, I did People quite a while, but one, until they kicked me out of the game. I am number one. <laughs> and told you you were going the wrong way. You're it was listen, basketball. And you're <laughs> listening to the happiest man that's ever drawn a breath. Not because of financial success. It's because I'm able to convert my message and pass it on to millions <laughs> to and an millions MP3 of people throughout the world. <laughs> a few moments ago, I talked to the citizens of Mexico that flew in today. <laughs> <laughs> With the train I didn't understand their language, and I used an interpreter. But I talked from the <laughs> I don't speak their family. funny words. In another hour and a half, I'll be with them in a club, showing them American <laughs> entertainment. Why I Hopefully not a gentleman's a club, Steve. Home? Why does my wife go along? Because they've come so far. What do they do in gentlemen's we clubs anyway? I have no see. idea. I'm assuming they just read words newspapers. <laughs> and the words sure, I, I don't know. Okay. Are the words you hear me in person tonight. Just a funny term. Yeah. It means nothing. The man or woman is Right, it means nothing. Right. About like the term grade. conviction. <laughs> has made a step. A step that 95% of the American people will never make. Born <laughs> the other 14% if will learn believe. math. <laughs> it's as simple as that. In closing, I'd like to tell you a story. Okay. It involves an attorney. An old prospector went out west many years ago to seek his fortune. <sighs> The classic no prospector. No gold he discover, right. but he had bragged to his friends and told them about all the There's money gold in them dark hills. And he come home until he became rich. Mm-hmm. He was a, leading his donkey, which was a bag of bones, across the desert 
desert after two years. <laughs> At least that's what he called his he wife. He was thirsty and he was hungry. And his donkey fell and she died. His ducky? He crawled along his, the sand and he knew it was His ducky fell over? finally Miss something Quackers. gave him hope. A piece of metal about three foot long was lying in front of him. It was glittering. He knew it was gold. Finally, he, it was all over the place. He, he grabbed knew it. Piece of it yeah. And he rolled and he ran and he walked and he almost died and he reached the nearest town and he staggered and he fell and he passed out. For three days they nursed him. They fed him. They watered him. They <laughs> Just him. like Jesus. But he wouldn't turn loose the metal in his hand. When he gained his sense, words, he went don't go chasing gold. He put it up on the <laughs> You'll die. That's gold. I right. made it. Tell me what it's worth. He analyzed <laughs> You can it. chase waterfalls, though. They put yeah. it in some solution, and the assayer turned to him after he did all this and said to him, It's not gold, my son. It's simply a bar of iron worth $5.50. He wouldn't okay. believe it. <laughs> he You're was an idiot. Me. You're okay. lying to me. You're going to go out and stake the claim. I will not believe you. It's what? gold. Any fool can see. It has to be gold. It has I've told to be? All my friends that I've I told my friends? I've got to make it gold, even if it's not. Yeah, you know, you Brian. Yeah, you know, Brian. you, you got to speak things into existence. My friends will laugh. If you it, say it enough, it's true. This is the lie. The okay. He's just me. telling people if that he's a liar now. Of our friends laughing if we fail. In if a parable uh, type of way. Yeah. He went to another essay office, and the same story occurred. He says, it's not. You're lying to me. Y'all trying to trick me. <laughs> I know it's gold. And he went to another town. That prospector ran away him, crying. But he, was so he locked himself in his room and he listened to Alanis Morissette for three days. Gold, if you believe me. But you must believe me. You can't say, well, it might happen. You got to believe everything I say and do everything I tell you. And you'll have people that'll try to stop you after you hear it from my words. Just you know, I'm trying to listen, listen to past tonight, the hair lip, but he Archie makes Dave, it hard sometimes. I know. We'll help people to tell you Glenn Turner made it. He was lucky. But you can't, because I once listened to a record that said the same thing. <laughs> he believed he a ball bearing was made of gold. <laughs> you can do the same. <laughs> they make horseshoes. <laughs> right. And we learned learn how to make horseshoes. The same bar barn will be worth $10. <laughs> what, horseshoes? Is he, he listening said, to Arrested gold. Development now? I have to be wealthy. Don't you understand? I brag. I can't face my friends unless I made it. And he said, right. you go my friends miles, only care about my material wealth. They're the good people. Needles, it may take you ten years they just want to get my ball of bearing from my hand. Knows how to make sewing needles, <laughs> and then you make that bar of iron in a sewing needle, and that bar of iron will be worth thirty-three hundred dollars. He said, "That's not enough. That's not gold. I got to be wealthy. Don't you understand? Would you willing to do what I tell you?" Are you willing to go over the mountain? Are you See this bank? Here, put on this mask you? and grab this gun. Can I tell you right. how much you can really make out of that bar of iron? Climb Will you believe me? every he said, yes, mountain. Go 70 miles to the west. It's a hard journey. People will try to stop you. People say you're not cut out that way. But you hey, now, you're an all-star. You can't have the skill. <laughs> or you're different. But don't you believe them? Because everyone can make it if he simply learns the secret. And the secret is self-belief. No. You learn how to make mainspring for watches and turning iron into gold. Will be worth a quarter of a million dollars. Just flatly endorsing Five alchemy? <laughs> yeah, he belongs on fairy tales. He can spin straw into gold. Three hundred dollars a sewing needle, or a quarter of a million dollars out of the same piece of metal. It's simply. I have the feeling that he listened to fairy tales as a kid and, and just picked perfect. up the wrong moral every time. <laughs> and thought it was true. No matter where you're at tonight, or today. Like he heard the golden your goose work. and was like, yeah, exactly I'm going to get in that gold. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm after. And no more. <laughs> he should have killed that From goose earlier. My heart. <laughs> and my wife From grew my her hair wife, so long, we climbed up the mountain. <laughs> your house and to you, that's why I call her no Rapunzel. Where you may be in the world today. <laughs> Actually, I say, no. <laughs> Thank you. We're done. They clearly were looping. Yeah. Welcome to Let's Book It with Steve Beach. Our guest today is Glenn Turner. Hi, Glenn. Well, hi. It's good to see you, but uh, you, you need the W in there, sir. It's Glenn oh, W. Turner. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Glenn W. Turner. Hey, I, you know, I, I want to say 
uh, you sound different. So I, I'm, did you spend some of your money to get that hair lip fixed? Uh, before the federal government took it all? Oh. Yes, yes, I did. Oh, okay. I invested in myself. <laughs> I get you. Mm-hmm. So uh, you mentioned on the record that we listened to that you have read a lot of books. Can you share with us a couple that you've read? Why, yes. And, and uh, I am a, uh, I, I read a lot. I believe the word is uh, loquacious. I am a loquacious reader. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, one of one of the books that I really, uh, one of the first ones I read was To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, yes. That's a great book. A classic, classic book by, by Harper Lee. I remember reading that in high school. That's a great book. It's, no, <clears throat> I, I, I read To Kill a Mockingbird mm-hmm. and, and Steve Beach, Not One Bird Dies. Well, no stars. It, it's it, it's kind of symbolic. It, then why call it that? I, why not call it, it racist courtroom? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, can you share with us maybe uh, another book, uh, classic book that you've read? Okay. Well, uh, there was this Steinbeck guy. Uh, oh yeah, John Steinbeck. Yeah, yeah, he's a great classic author of Mice and Men. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, that's, that's that's a great one too. Yeah, no mice. Are, some men. It, Again, it's uh, kind of a, you know, when you're an author, you take these literary things, you know, to kind of symbolize. That's okay. I won't bother explaining. Uh, is there maybe a, uh, another book that you've read uh, by, by chance? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah How about, here. have you read uh, uh, Lord of the Flies? Well, I have read Lord of the Flies. Um, and no Jesus, no insects. Just, just kids on an island. Just being mean to each other. Who booked this guy? Did you just so mean? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, Glenn uh, W. Turner, uh, for joining us today. Well, well, but 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 there's one more. Oh, okay, okay. Hopefully this will make sense. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yes. Uh, The Great Gatsby. Okay, this one. This one should be good. The Great Gatsby. (laughs) Like, I was amazed at the character. I was enthralled with him. Yeah. He okay. is a morally bankrupt, vacuous, vain man Wait. who is willing to sacrifice all the people yeah. around him in the pursuit Wait, of that, wealth. That, uh, I, I think you got that story backwards there, uh, Glenn. Uh, Mr. Tr- anyway, uh, well... Thanks for uh, no. That story was great. I loved it. It was like reading like my own words on a page. I was like, uh, of course, it like, was. This man gets me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> I, I felt <laughs> <Sorry>. seen. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, <laughs> thanks for joining us today, especially we're, about the hit uh, and run. We're, we're gonna we're, well, we're gonna, gonna cut, we're gonna cut this a little short today. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us, and hopefully, we'll have a better guest uh, next week. What do you mean a better guest? I'm a All great right, guest. I am. Glenn W. Turner! He just is telling people to believe in a lie. Oh, yes. to Well, for you to believe the lie first, and then if right. you believe the lie, other people will believe it yeah. too. And then when people call you out and say it's a lie, well, you're just not believing in me. You're not supporting me. Right. No, yeah. you're an idiot. Uh-huh. <laughs> or... Just doing something blatantly illegal, and they don't want to be involved right. in it in any right. way, shape, or form. I'm happy that we found this record, if only for the fact that we can remind people that it's bad to take money from innocent people, right. and you deserve to be mocked if you do so. Yeah, I don't care if you have a disability or, or not, because that has nothing to do with your... It's not like he didn't understand what he was doing. Oh, no. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's not like he had some kind of mental deficit. He, he, you know, he knew exactly what he was doing. Yes, he did. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Keep joining us. And uh, as we have proven with this one, not all records should be collected. Thank you.